by everybody. Solomon's Tales. Carrying on. Where do we leave it? Ning had come back to Solomon's room. He'd won that contest down in centre point. So he ate. Um, anyway, hit the sack. No aerobics, as I mentioned. She got the boyfriend. And he was respecting that. She. Yeah. He wasn't going there. Anyway, crashed out. Um, previous night, or nights was it? Loud music, no sleep. Anyway, he managed to get to sleep. He was whacked. Fast asleep. Middle of the night, maybe two o'clock in the morning, three in the morning. It wasn't the music that wakes him up. It was Ning next to him, crying. And he sort of woke up and was like, but she's asleep, she's crying, and you think, oh dear. Anyway, he cuddles up, puts his arm around her, and pulls her close, and um, sort of comforts her, but she's asleep. But she wakes, her eyes open, and she realises, and he wipes her eyes, being a gentleman. And then she starts talking and starts telling Solomon her life story. You know, it's like two, three in the morning, and he's, oh no. And she's lying there and she starts telling him a story and he's like, oh, why are you crying? And it turns out that Ning had a Thai boyfriend, her first love, that cheated on her loads of times and didn't work out, broke up. And after that, really, it's this guy with the golf that's her boyfriend that she's happy with. But um, she sort of indicates that she's never worked in the bars as working in the bars you know she'd only been sort of drinking in them and very choosy occasionally would go with a boyfriend and she was upset because it seems that recently she maybe have gone with somebody for money and it wasn't good and she was a bit cheesed off with her life um and she just sort of talked rambled on about feelings and stuff and then somehow she got to the subject of thanking Solomon for being a really good friend. She felt secure and safe with him. He didn't jump all over her and abuse her like he could have and stuff like that. And then she got onto the subject that you should have a girlfriend, you know. Uh, and he's like, well, no, I'm here for a year to see if it's possibly work for me to stay, you know. He'd been there, what, two months, gone off to Cambodia with her and bit of a trip about, come back, so maybe three months into this trip. And he said, you know, he, he didn't want to spend money on girls and all that, he just, yeah. And she's like, mm, maybe I can help. And he goes, mm. Anyway, she, she fell asleep. So eventually Solomon, back to sleep. Good night's sleep. Uh, wakes up late, must be nine, ten o'clock in the morning. She's out cold, and he thinks, well, I'm going to go for a walk. I'm, uh, I need some fresh air. I need a good bit of exercise. So he does, a, he comes out, shower, change. She's fast to kip, down. He goes down Soy 2 to the beach road, walks all the way along beach road to Walking Street, up the connecting road to the second road, and then is heading back up to the room. And that's a good mile plus long, what it feels like here. Halfway up. Cafe, English breakfast, fantastic. Uh, then carries on back to the room, gets to the room, and things gone. Mm -hmm. Oh well, doors open. That door, instead of like Yale locks, it's got a big key, um, like a long key, and it's just a pain to carry that around. So there's no valuables, valuables in there. So Solomon just leaves the door unlocked all the time, and the keys thrown in the bag somewhere so he's not fussed about it. there's nothing in there so yeah goes in she's gone he's, right okay um and he as yes, you do you know it's getting hot outside lies on the bed closes his eyes for an hour now in that evening ahead is another little contest that uh um frozen's organized doesn't know where anything's gone so 
jewel ring later. And he wakes up, again, another shower. He thinks he's just going to go and uh, get a bit of practice, um, and then some food a bit later. Now, again, there's another one of those sharky contests coming up about a week later, and it's a big one, it's about a 50,000 baht one. Like before, I think I mentioned, he goes, he'll have a practice up there, try and get one of the girls, the boss's girlfriend's really good. And he's only around the corner. He thinks, I'm going to go and have a practice, get a soft drink, um, have a couple of hours up there, just knocking the balls about. And he does, goes up. Again, I don't remember if I've mentioned it. There's so many of these pool contests and tables about. But he goes in, bosses, managers, I think it was a manager, girlfriend, gets that one, which is really good. Buys her a drink, gets on the table, and uh, there's hardly anyone in there. She's good, she, she beats him quite a bit, and he beats her, and she's very good. Um, he's had encounters with her before, I'm sure I've mentioned it. We've done so many Solomon's Tales now, I'm beginning to forget which stories I've told you. But, as a knockabout for a couple of hours, buys that girl a couple of drinks, and then thinks, right, comes out, and there's some food place just outside, and, uh, he just grabs some fried chicken and rice and sits down and just has some food. Sort of it's late afternoon, it's sort of four or five in the afternoon. Walks back to the room, right, shower again, change. This uh, one tonight was, a, it was an early one, it was about half six, seven, somewhere up Soy BK around there, Soy Linky or one of those roads. He gets on the phone, it's frozen. Yep, yeah, she says um, she'll be down about 10 minutes on the bike and they'll, uh, they'll take the bikes up there because it won't be a long contest and it's a, it's a bit of a pain to walk to from where his room is. No news from Ning at all, nothing. So he's all ready, he's eaten, showered, shaved, ready to go. Uh, frozen turns up, it's high, kiss on the cheek, all the rest of it. And uh, they jump on the bikes. Off they go. It's only ten minutes, five minutes, ten minutes up the road on the bikes. Quite often you got the go up these side roads the wrong way. You should, one way streets. You just on a bike you don't care. You just pssst. anyway gets up near Soybe Cow. Blow me down. Solomon hardly ever. Well, he never uses the helmet on the bike. And he's always whipping up and down these side streets the wrong way. Um. Frozen's in front on her bike. They're just creeping up this one side street. Policeman jumps out. Oh, God, here we go. Um, and uh, doesn't say anything to... He, he stops both of them, but he just grunts at Frozen when he comes straight over to Solomon, being a foreigner, on a bike, no helmet, going up the street the wrong way around, and he starts trying to talk English. And he's got his little ticket book out, and you think, oh, here we go. Um, Solomon's got international driving permit and the guy's talking to him he has got his passport in his pocket but anyway Solomon pulls out his permit <laughs> and the guy's like whoosh, takes it off him <laughs> and he gets this ticket gives Solomon this ticket says go police station you get this back tomorrow you pay fine basically and, oh great that hasn't happened to him before. Anyway, Frozen just sort of says, don't say anything. He's like, right. Anyway, <laughs> so the policeman lets him go, and he lets him carry up the one-way one street the wrong way. <laughs> He's like, what? Ugh. Anyway, gets up to this bar, and uh, Frozen says, don't worry, I'll sort that tomorrow. And Tom's like, well, okay, brilliant. Little bar. Uh, very small American pool table, one of the little six foot ones. And there's about 12, 15 people in there. Um, not been to this bar before. Now, it was a Scandinavian bar or something. As soon as Solomon walks in, he's looking around, checking the people, see if he knows any of the players. And uh, they order a drink, they sit down, and he's watching. There's some cut of blood playing, practicing. 
but he doesn't recognise any of them now. But this is good. This is really good. Now it's a foreigner. It is some sort of Scandinavian, maybe Dutch owner. Um, quite a big guy, as in overweight. Sat at the end of the bar. Seems to be controlling it. A couple of girls behind the bar. 20 minutes pass and then the Thai girls start coming out. They kick the guys off the table. They set the balls up. Again, the traditional blackboard comes out and gets stuck up. Names and they start asking people who's playing. Usual. But this one was 1,100 baht to play. That was different. And the 100 baht was going to the bar. And that was okay. And 11 signed up. But there was more people in there, but only 11 signed up, including Solomon. And the announce was uh, 8,000 baht winner, uh, 3,000 baht second. Was written on the board. Okay. This one, the rules, some bars play it, some don't, where he put, anyone breaks off, regardless if the black goes down with this bar, that's pulled back out on the spot if it does. And if the white goes in, it's put back in the D. But someone breaks off and it doesn't start until after the break off. Other games, you, the break is part of that person's go. Put the black in, they're out. So this is one where the break off, so that's good. That's cool. No problem at all. And, the, uh, and also, that the black's part of any ball. So it doesn't matter if you're not black in. Thereafter. So, oh, okay. Slightly different rules. So, he knows it worked it out and checks out the cues most bars have got just standard two three hundred baht one piece cheap wooden cues um, and the tips are nothing special solomon prefers a small 10 millimeter rounded tip you know for the snooker players out there uh, but there was none of those they were all these big plastic stick on tips but okay solomon keeps a little bit of sandpaper that he pinched off a, back, a box of matches and he just refs the tip up um, and quite often it's the one cue that's just passed around but Solomon grabbed a cue off the rack where they're hanging on the wall there's a few cues grabs one and he keeps that he's like yeah, I'm not having that cue I'm gonna have this one the right weight felt good anyway start playing um, it's quite apparent that most of the guys playing are just average um, it's early, so no one's drunk, which is a shame. But uh, Simon gets a little bit unlucky on a couple of shots and loses a couple of lives, but he's hanging in there. Gets down to the last four and uh, doing okay. He's just got to get to the last two to win some money. Fourth place bloke, out he goes. There's only three left. Solomon uh, thinks, okay. He works out these other two. And they've just pretty much cleared the ball, so the balls are reset up again, another break off. Um, Simon's just got to knock one of these guys out. And he, tactics, you know. He fa thinks this one guy is reasonable, so he's going to try and knock this guy out. Um, but it can backfire. Over the time Solomon has lost a lot of these contests but I haven't told you about them but, you know there's ones where it just doesn't go right unlucky or whatever and there's quite a few that he, over the time and the future that he loses but he's he's a really good tactical player anyway he manages to make a, a great shot that pots a ball and leaves the white with an easy pot for the next guy hoping that guy will pot that ball and the natural angle will hide the white cue ball and mess up the next guy Sure enough, it does, it works. And then the guy that he favours, loses a life, out. That's it, Solomon's won again. Well, second place at least. Three days and back. Re-rack, one frame. Guy breaks off and then off they go. Guy gets so lucky, so, so lucky. Solomon ends up putting the cue ball down and then another bad shot and loses. Well, gets second place. Just unlucky, just one of those matches. This other guy's over the moon and he's one of the Scandinavian lot and he's, they're all happy he's won. Uh, even by Solomon and uh, frozen a drink. But Solomon got 3,000 baht. Gives 1,000 baht to um, 
frozen. So it's cost him a thousand one hundred baht to enter. He give her a thousand baht. He's had a couple of drink, so he hasn't really won anything that night. It might be a couple of hundred baht up. So, yeah. Anyway, there we go. Has a drink. Jump back on the bikes. Frozen wants food. Down to second road. Thai food. Again, and yeah, end of soy. Eight. Loads of Thai food there, like a market area back then. I don't think it's there now, but then it was. Anyway, Frozen saying that um, a Thai boyfriend back in Bangkok's playing up a bit. And um, she's just telling him things are going on. Her foreign boyfriend is uh, has sent her some money, so she's okay at the moment. She just paid her rent and everything, but not much left. And she's, over the next week, she said there's no contests that she can find but she's going to scour around but the weekend after was that big one uh, up at Sharky's and uh, so I was like yeah I know I need to get a lot of practice for that one odds on that one guy from he's either Belgium or German is going to turn up and he's the one that's so hard to beat he's just so smooth and really good player Anyway, have food, all done. Frozen said I'm heading off. It's about, only about 9, 9.30. And Solomon thinks, well, I actually fancy going out and getting a bit drunk because I'm time to let my hair down a bit. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head to town. I think so, I'll take the bike back to the room, jump in a song tail. I'm going to go down walking street and have a wander around. That's where we're going to leave it. Don't miss the next one. Hmm. I'll see you there. Bye bye.